Welcome to Development Dynamics with Maxi. I know, yeah, I'm growing older and uh, a different version of me keeps emerging all the time. I'm really glad to be hosting amazing conversations and, and, and reflections with leaders and practitioners um, in what I call the third sector. It's not the private sector, it's not the public sector, it's organizations and individuals who are doing much for social impact through civic work, um, and today, I am extremely delighted. Uh, this has been a long time coming. We've had to change a number of times. But on set with me in, in, in this place, in our studio, is none other than Nerima Wako. Now, Nerima, some of you may know, she is the executive director at Siasa Place. You've seen her on TV a number of times, uh, both in the lead up to elections, but also commentating and being a political analyst on various other important development issues. And today we want to hear her story from birth to date, uh, sussing out the moments, the, the memories, the, the time, and we are really happy that it can finally happen. So first of all, um, we are recording this in January, so let me say Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> happy New Year. Has it been a Happy New Year for you? It started off a little shaky. Uh, we had a family loss, yeah. but it's it's getting better. Yeah, for mm. Sana for Thank that. You. Um, and wishing you nothing but love and light ahead in, in, in the year and that your family is able to navigate that. Um, how are you today? Today, um, the morning was a little rough, yeah. uh, but I'm doing so much better. Yeah. I'm feeling a lot more relaxed. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. good. That's good. I envy how... Um, in my observation, you are conscious and you acknowledge the highs and the lows of of being. And I'm looking forward to this conversation to just learn from you how also that looks like with a wild wind mm. <laughs> when it comes to life. You mm. know, um, as 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 a woman, as a, as a leader, as a, as someone who is organizing um, others and also as a, as a wife and as a mother. So it's, um, it's a conversation that I'm really looking forward to having. So let's, let's start from the very origins. Where okay. does Nerima come from? That's a name actually that is yeah. not very, <laughs> uh, very popular or it's not your regular everyday name. So what, what, what are your roots? Where do you come uh, from? Mm. So first of all i have to nerima is my name mm -hmm. and it's from my great grandmother mm -hmm. and i have four names mm -hmm. so growing up mm -hmm. my family actually calls me martha oh wow yeah so martha selena is my mm. other name mm. which now comes from my mother's side which was one of her favorite aunties mm. uh, from the coast okay. and my dad is from busia Ah, so right. I just want to, let me start from the beginning, beginning. Yes. So Nerima Wako is the brand mm -hmm. name, mm. but Nerima Wako Ojiwa mm -hmm. is now the wife, the mother. Right. And I decided to drop Martha yeah. when I was in university. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a friend of mine. Mm. Her name is Besho. Mm -hmm. And she was like, you're so unique. You're so interesting. Mm. Mm. I don't know how I understand how you have a common name mm. like Martha. Mm. And she was like, I believe you're going to do something. Mm. Let's use another name. Mm. So on my 25th birthday, mm. I was like, actually, my other name is Nerima. She was like, that's what I'm going to call you. Yeah. From today, yeah. you're Nerima. Wow. Yeah. It's, but, and it's... I, I, and it's not just a name you picked. Beautiful thing. It's a name that uh, that existed. Uh, do you know much about the person you're named after? I know that she was a very strong woman. Mm -hmm. I know that even when my dad speaks of her, mm -hmm. she is one of the toughest women that he knew, mm. including his mother. So mm -hmm. I come from a lineage of very strong women on both sides. Mm and women who pushed for education uh, to educate girls mm -hmm. and for girls to be at the fore mm. of decisions mm -hmm. so even when i think about my grandmother one of the first to drive mm. have a bicycle wow. uh wow. my granddad had a phd 
and I'm talking about oh. the 20s, 1920. My goodness. And so I come from a family that enjoys education. Yeah. And, and our family has a lot of teachers. Mm. So from both sides, mm. both my granddads were teachers. Mm. And so I believe that we be, we love to educate and mm. teach others and mm. learn more. Yeah. It's just something that's very genetic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you done like family tree and association? I have. To uh, what generation? <laughs> I have. Yeah. We've tried as far back as to how my father's side coming from Uganda. Mm -hmm. And so we have some family that is still right. Ugandan. So right. we live on the border there mm. in Matayos. Mm. And so I'm, I'm a third born mm -hmm. in a family of four. Right. And there are two boys, two girls. Mm. I think I'm the one who's most interested mm. about our ancestry. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so even though we are Luya, we mm. come from a very small clan. Mm -hmm. And I'm even Luya is not a tribe. It's no, it's many. not. Mm. There are so many tribes, mm. like clans within mm. the Luya community. Mm. And Abu Havi is one of those tiny, mm. tiny... So what? Abu Havi? Abu Havi. I can't. <laughs> so it's one of those really tiny, tiny yeah. clans that um, even when you go to Matayos itself, mm. it's maybe 20 minutes to the Busia border. Mm. But our Luya is different. Mm. From the Tesos have a different Luya as well, Maragoli, Bukusu. Mm. And so I think the Luya community in itself is highly misunderstood. Right. Uh, we are very different. And mm. then from my mother's side, mm -hmm. um, we are not quite sure. Like my grandmother was very light skinned. Mm -hmm. And so we believe that along the way, there's some heritage that could be linked to the Portuguese. Right. And so we came from the south on yeah. that end. Yeah. So we have a uh, lineage in Malawi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So coming mm. through the south and settling now at the coast. Mm. Now my mother, mm. she's from Mazeras. What, 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 um, what tribe? Yeah. She's Duruma under the Mijikenda. Uh. Yes. Wow. So another small yeah. tribe because Giriyama is one of the bigger yeah. tribes within the Miji yeah. yeah. That's 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 very interesting. The uniqueness of um, the, you know the tiny the, the tiny clans, but also the fact that they acknowledge that you know it's not a lot of us who do that kind of um, family tree tracing back mm -hmm. to where we've come from. So it's really beautiful to hear that. And um, so do you know how your parents met? I, I hear stories. I'm not quite sure. There's somewhere along the way the stories break apart. Because what? I mean, it's coast to coast. So. <laughs> because, you know, uh, my grandfather, in fact, I like to say that I'm my grandfather's legacy. So yeah. I have an uncle who was attorney general for so many years mm. and then he became senator. Mm. Uh, but my grandfather, now on my mother's side, mm -hmm. He was foreign affairs minister. Mm. He entered politics. Actually, he took after Tom Boyer's assassination mm. um, in the 60s yeah. as Sec General. Right. Um, and so he was very political at a time from a tribe that is very small. Mm. And so he worked under one of the first governments to be formed. Yeah. And so I think the interesting thing is they met in Nairobi. Mm. Uh, because here you have two families where I've told you, yeah. um, very early on, educated. Yeah, exactly. So even when we gained independence, yeah. there was a search for those educated citizens to and sort of take over, yeah, yeah. Take mm. over these posts, and mm. there were few. Mm. So they moved to Nairobi, and I believe my father was actually friends with now my mother's older brother. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure if they were neighbors or if mm. they were in the same school, mm -hmm. but it's something about them being near mm. one another and mm. so they were childhood friends mm. uh to begin with mm -hmm. and then they met mm. yeah mm. and and <laughs> voila here you are yeah so um uh do you have any recollection of the time that uh you came uh, that you were born and mm -hmm. what was what was the what was the uh, surrounding circumstances? Mm. You say you're a third born. Yes. Uh, what was the sur surrounding circumstances within your family? Uh, well, your parents, you know, still mm. uh, did either of them need to like um, focus on just raising the the mm. children? Where were you? And just a little bit about that time that you came. That's interesting because mm. so when I came in 1988. Mm. 
the house that I was born into mm -hmm. is a house that I lived in my entire life. We wow. never moved. Wow. Any single yeah. time. That's that's again very root. So you have a lot of I'm, I'm sure I'm sure a lot of memories. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of memories mm. and there's a huge uh, age difference between my two older siblings mm -hmm. and then the two younger ones. Mm -hmm. So the difference in age between my brother and myself is about a year and a half. Yeah. And the Your same. Last born, bro. Yeah, my mm. last born, bro. Mm -hmm. And then the same for my older brother and my older sister, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. But between us, mm. between me and my sister, mm -hmm. is about 10 years. My goodness. Mm. And so sometimes. It's a whole other generation. It is. Mm. So when we sit down and talk about our parents and mm. growing up, mm. we have completely different That's views yeah. of mm. who our parents were. Mm. Uh, because I know when my mother had my older siblings, she was young yeah. and they were just starting off in life. So mm. they moved mm. a lot. A lot. Yeah. And I also know that my mother was working. Mm -hmm. And so she ended up leaving her work toward the birth of me. Mm -hmm. And now focusing on raising you, us. You and your bro. Yeah. And, and our father could mm. support mm. the whole family. Mm. So we have completely different experiences and, and yeah, experiences yeah. and even how we view life is yeah. completely different. Exactly. How we engage our parents, Absolutely. me and my younger brother, yeah. um, it's a very, <laughs> the relationship that we have, yeah. our older siblings are like, how, how? how do you do yeah. that? Yeah. So you can definitely see wow. um, how the economic factor plays. Yeah in raising mm. children mm. and mm. the kind of opportunities you can give them access to yeah. uh, because we both went to private schools mm -hmm. and then we went to international schools mm. while my brother and sister they went through the kenyan system mm. through and through public school all through yeah mm. and then in in high school they went to boarding school mm. And, and I remember at the age of 12 after KCP, actually, I didn't want to pick up my results. Mm. I was so nervous. Mm. I thought I had failed because mm. I had, I am not good in Kiswahili. Mm -hmm. and, and I had a Kiswahili teacher who would always repeat in class mm. that if you fail KCP, mm. you have failed in life. In life. Oh man. So I used to feel, mm. what if I just don't find out? Mm. I yeah. might be better off mm. not mm. knowing, mm. you know, yeah. <laughs> whether I'll fail in life <laughs> exactly. or make it. Yeah. So I actually didn't pick Your results. the results. Wow. My parents picked them without telling me. Mm. So I remember coming home in that same house. Mm. Actually, I was home and they came mm. with a yellow envelope. Right. And I remember them sitting outside and they're looking at me. And the only thing I asked mm. Have I passed? I didn't even care what, what marks. What marks for what? I don't. I didn't care. Yeah. What grades? Yeah. I didn't care. Yeah. I was like, did I pass? Yeah. And my mom and dad, they laugh, they smile. Of course you did. Aww. And so I remember now thinking about which schools mm. and the schools I had been placed mm. in. Mm. I was placed in St. George's. Mm. But before you even go to high mm -hmm. school, mm -hmm. your own upbringing, what do you mm. recall? We, 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 we've because I just want to follow the whole, the yeah, whole, the whole speaking. story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and then we'll we'll connect it with Saint George's. Uh, your childhood experiences. How are the, how? What I do had, you recall the most? I had I had a great childhood. Mm. I think something my parents did was try their best to shield us mm. from understanding that life can be stressful. Mm -hmm. They talked about it. Mm. But there's no day that we went without food yeah. or missing school. Mm. But they would try and teach us that mm. for some, mm. they happens. miss out. Mm. And we were taught from a very early age mm. that there's something that you can do mm. to make sure that everyone has mm. um, the access that you have. Mm. So my, my dad traveled a lot. Mm. And I remember as a child, um, because of the work that he did, mm. he worked in the aviation industry. Mm. Um, you would wake up and he's already flown to another country. Mm. And so how you would know that dad was home, he would leave you like a packet of sweets from mm. that country. Mm. 
mm-hmm. and so you'd know all oh, these come from Switzerland yeah, or these Belgium, come from whatever. Yeah, yeah Belgium mm. and that's I grew up getting stuff like sweets mm. from different parts and so I had horrible teeth <laughs> but but yeah I was at the dentist constantly constantly <laughs> look at your dental formula no, it's perfect <laughs> But there's one time my dentist told me, she said, do you want to have no teeth? Have you seen a 90 year old by oh. where their mouth is? Mm. That's how you're going to look if you by the time you're sweets. 10. Yeah. <laughs> if you continue yeah. uh, eating too many sweets and yeah. not taking care of your teeth. Yeah. And I specifically remember we were going to go to the dentist because at this point mm. I had a really bad toothache. Mm to where I could feel my tooth falling apart, Whoa. like pieces of my tooth. Oof. And I went to the window pane mm. and I said a prayer, I said, Lord Jesus, if I just, if I just don't have one more cavity, yeah. this, this last time just save me from mm. not having a cavity, I will take care mm. of my teeth. Yeah. I have no more feelings. Yeah. And I remember going to the dentist and I didn't have a cavity. Oh, wow. And so for me, that was the beginning of my spiritual journey. Oh. Yeah. I want to see how that connects. That was the beginning. As I try and dot that, you know, with, with a lot of sweets, <laughs> then getting your first tooth out was, was not a hard challenge at all, right? <laughs> yeah, maybe they that's what. Fall out. Yeah, exactly. You eat a sweet, a, a hard toffee, <laughs> it comes out it with the tooth. It comes out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The beginning of your spiritual journey from a very young age. From a very young age, mm-hmm. I knew that there was a spiritual being mm. that actually listened. Uh, yeah, because I was sure that I had a hole in my tooth. I saw it. Yeah. And to go to the dentist and say, it, you're it's good, not it's not there. Well, so um, the only explanation would have, the only logical explanation was spiritual. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Yeah, yeah. It was. And yeah. so for me, it sounded crazy, mm. but... That was the basis for me to say and believe that Mm. there's a higher power power. uh, that now I began to have a relationship with at a young age. And speaking of, so as as, as kids, maybe you and your small brother and also maybe the elder siblings and your parents, were you going to church or um, like was was that part of how growing up was? Yes, Mm -hmm. my mother never missed a day, even if it was storming. no matter what, we always went to church. Mm. And it was a habit mm. that we had in our household. So mm. I went through Sunday school, mm. each and every level. Catholic? To, or? No, mm-hmm. um, Protestant mm-hmm. at Lovington United. Mm. My mother is still a member mm. oh, wow. at Lovington United wow. as we speak oh, wow. today. Mm. And they're building another bigger sanctuary. Mm. Mm. And I told her they need to have a pew. For named you. after yeah. you i mean all, all those yes. years <laughs> yeah 30 plus maybe Many more years. Yeah. Uh. and so in the end i also became a sunday school teacher mm. in that church mm. and ended up getting married in, in that, that church. church oh yeah. nice nice mm. that's so you have a lot of roots just hearing you so far just you know um you understand where you come from uh uh, was the bridge between your siblings and you, and how, how was the relationship mm. between, I mean, they were probably in high school when you guys yeah. were Babies, very young. Yeah. Yes, because I remember being in primary mm-hmm. and my sister at this point, she's in USIU, mm. she's going to university mm. and I would have school on Saturday. Mm. And you know, on Saturday, the school, they don't provide lunch. So my sister used to drop lunch. Mm. And I remember standing at the window, I went to St. Nicholas Primary School. Mm -hmm. And I would see my sister walking in her biker shorts and a bandana and Mm. braids and Mm. a t-shirt. And I'm like, that's my sister. That's so cool, right? Yeah, she's like, so cool, so funky. (laughs) (laughs) And I'm here, 11. (laughs) I don't understand what happens, but hoping one day I will be that cool Mm. and free. Mm. Because for me, I'm Mm. feeling I'm trapped in school. Yeah. On Saturday, and you can do whatever yeah. you want. Are you guys close with uh, your siblings? Not in the beginning. Mm-hmm. I think in the beginning, it was tough to be close because of the age yeah. difference. Clearly. Yeah. And so 
I think there was a point when my sister found me annoying mm. because I really wanted to be mm. like her. Mm. And I was in her face. So mm. when her friends would come over, I want to be there. there seated. What are they talking about? Yeah. But I'm too young mm. for it all. Mm. I think we became close mm. now when I, as a teenager, so mm. from 17, mm. 18, Onwards. yeah, mm. we began to build a better relationship mm. with each other. Mm. And how was your teenagehood? Uh, I would say my teenagehood, I was bullied oh, a lot all right. in high school. Oh, in high school? Yeah. Mm, St. George's? Mm -mm, I never went. Oh, okay. So let's connect the dots. So you you didn't go for your KCS, KCP results. Yeah. Uh, your parents went, they came, they, they gave you, then you were right now to choose a school. The school that you chosen was St. George's. Yes. And then? Out of the three, I thought St. George's was the best. And St. George's was... I mean, if I recall very well, it, like you. it just was. <laughs> so I made it to that. <laughs> oh, yeah. But um, I was just like, if KCP can give me an anxiety attack like this, yeah. it's time I just left the Kenyan system, system completely altogether. Mm. So I remember coming up with a whole presentation mm. to my parents. Mm. And literally a whole presentation mm. literally sat them down mm. in the mm. sitting room mm. and came up with the points as to why yeah i should not continue with the with kenyan system, system. Mm -hmm. and these are the other systems available yeah and these are the schools i have looked mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. and these are the schools i have zeroed down on mm. that would be good for so me you've done your research i well. did my research mm -hmm. and and i don't know i don't know how my parents took it but they listened oh, and good. that's how i was mm. changed mm. i changed systems and that's mm. when i joined aga khan academy mm. and now i started doing the british system mm -hmm. yeah and how was that that was interesting in the beginning yeah. because i was used to being in a catholic primary school yeah and now i've been shifted yeah. to mm. an ismaili school right which is now mainly muslim yeah. at the time mm. And a lot of Indian descent students mm. or foreign, mm -hmm. um, the Africans, the Kenyans, who are very few. Mm. And so you're in assembly and you're hearing prayers that you're not accustomed to yeah. hearing. Yeah. And so it was it was very different mm. uh, in mm. the beginning. Mm. And then I began to get used to it and mm -hmm. I actually learned a lot about India and Pakistan. Mm. Mm. Uh, because of school yeah. and even the different systems. Yeah. And so we had a class called Theory of Knowledge or mm -hmm. Thinking Skills. Mm. And that was my favorite where we would just sit for an hour and a half and discuss why the world is the way it is. The way it is. Oof. And it could be any topic. Any topic. I see why it can be a favorite. Any yeah. topic. And it yeah. would be why are most of the scientists that are recognized in the world men? Yeah. Debate. Yeah. So you start thinking from a gender lens, yeah. from an equity lens. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's those differences mm -hmm. in that school system. Mm -hmm. uh, Was it an examinable? Uh, no. Yeah. Perfect. I like those because those <laughs> are the ones actually that m end up meaning the most later. They mean the most. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah. those are the ones you build life on. Around, yeah. Yeah, yeah. not being Critical graded thinking. for things. Yeah. Mm. yeah. You are giving an example. Yeah, so mm. I was saying, um, just thinking around that and realizing how education and access to education mm. impacts mm. the access that women have in yeah. terms of career yeah. at the age of 13. 13. Mm. And so for me, you're already seeing the world differently mm. because even in this school, we didn't have a bell. Mm. There were no mm. bells. Just manage your time. You manage your time. Mm. So mm. when when it's eleven, mm. people just start packing their books. Yeah. The teacher knows it's the end of the class, mm. and we mm. move. And you you move. You, you, you move. You, you you do the next thing. Yeah. Mm. So I think that I was learning so many things because of school mm. that I was able to now apply mm. in life mm. and. You're able to mature very quickly mm. from a young age because mm. now you're exposed to yeah. these things. Mm. Mm. Um, and we've gotten to the place where now you're in high school. Yeah. It, um, you change systems completely from, you know, what is like our uh, KC, uh, K Kenya certificate of um, secondary education. 
and you're in a very different system, very different um, entity, you're learning different, uh, different things, you're understanding a little bit more about the Indian, the Pakistan culture. Um, you mentioned that also bullying starts mm. playing a role uh, someplace here. Yeah, mm -hmm. bullying, bullying was mainly in high school mm -hmm. because the interesting thing with, with primary, yeah. I never used the name Wako a lot. Because mm -hmm. at the time, my uncle was attorney general. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans and politicians, mm. I don't know what that the association. fascination yeah. is. Mm. So a lot of my friends, mm -hmm. especially like within my stream, my class knew mm. Wako. But yeah. you know, after you do that exam for the final mm. KCP, mm -hmm. you're now putting your index number. Yeah, and the and surname becomes the first name. Yeah, mm. and and I remember mm. people, especially when I was called, my my number and my name was called. So we're about 80 of us mm -hmm. in this huge hall. Mm. And people are like, what? Mm. She's Wako? Mm. She's in our class? Mm. So I, I moved from being almost invisible mm. Uh, because in primary, I wasn't one of the popular Kids. girls. You know, they yeah. are the girls who <laughs> sort of develop faster. They know a lot about boys, yeah. a lot about the music. So I was very the, the ones that clicks gr groupy around, eh? So mm. I was just, I was very, still am um, mm. a tomboy. Mm. And so I used to play football with the boys by the time I was in class six. And I was very athletic. Mm -hmm. So I moved to that invisible space. Yeah, yeah. space now dumped in a high school mm. where the system has changed mm -hmm. and my name doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. um, there are kids there who are related to even more famous yeah. uh, politicians mm. and some of them mm. media personalities. Mm -hmm. And so I thought I would fit in, mm. but no. It wasn't the case. I know it wasn't. Mm -hmm. I was still sort of the friend to everybody. I mm. fit in every group, whether mm. it was sports or science or debate mm. or dance. Mm. I was just that person who would we, find my space in everything. You're adaptable enough to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then I was bullied because I was small bodied. Mm. I was bullied because my classmates around me are growing and I'm not. Mm. And so I've always been very petite. Yeah. And then I have just always been not, I wouldn't say strange, but mm. different. I identify like, yeah, <laughs> completely. I like your story. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> you're the odd one out. I'm the odd one out. But we, you're settling in still. You, you're not, you're not a bad boy. You're not <laughs> a bad girl. You're, you, you are yourself, but different and unique. Yeah. Mm. So. So it was tough. I remember mm. where the bullying got so bad. Mm -hmm. um, I asked my mother if I could change schools. Mm. Oh, um, wow. I didn't want to go to school at Anymore. some point. Mm. Yeah. Wait, it was a day you are schooling. Yeah, I was right. a day scholar. Mm -hmm. uh, we never went to boarding school, me and my younger brother. Mm. And it's something that my older siblings, I was like, you see? Yeah, soft, soft life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, we're always like, uh, look at us now. Yeah. We're all mm. on the same level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yes, I was a day scholar. Mm. And I really thank my mother for spending time with mm. us. Mm. Uh, because she was those parents who, after a day of school, she would actually ask us, how was your, your day? day. Mm. What did you go through today? Mm -hmm. So she would know my friends or... Mm. Uh, the issues that I was mm. dealing with. The experiences that you had during yeah. that day. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So when I told her that the bullying is getting too much mm. to the point where I couldn't even go to the field. Mm. We were playing hockey and mm. I was captain. Mm. And even by the time I walk into the field, mm. someone is calling me names mm. and making fun of me. Mm. I was like, it's enough. And mm. so I remember my mother, um, you know, she's a very strong woman mm -hmm. and she has always been. Mm. And she looks at me and she says, you want to leave a place because someone makes you uncomfortable? Mm. You shouldn't be the one leaving. Do Come not mm. let someone push you mm. out of your space. I love that a lot. Yeah. I, I, as a parent, I'm sure now I think you even appreciate it oh, more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. And so for me, 
I think that was the foundation mm. of continuing mm. with my mm. unique, authentic self. self. Yeah. And not caring mm. how people perceive me mm. as to how I show up. Mm. This is who I am. Mm. And and that encouraged me to just be mm. honest about my living. Mm. And and that's how I've managed to remain grounded mm. because mm. you stop trying to impress yeah. at a very early yeah. age. And then you also realize some things won't change. Some things about you won't change. It's 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 who you are. So if someone is uncomfortable with the fact that you're probably you know tinier than they are or or faster than they are in or more sporty than they are really yeah the issue is them <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly yeah they're probably having their own issues mm. Mm. so they are trying to use you mm. as a scapegoat absolutely yeah absolutely um I, there was the cost not the cost the um, critical thinking that uh critical thinking class that you are having uh, and dedicating a young uh, an hour and a half every week to that is, is very good. But what are what were the other subjects of interest for you? I really, really... So I had geography mm -hmm. and geography is the class that I passed. Mm. So much so that um, we used to call them A-star. Mm. You even get above an A. Mm. And it was the only A-star <laughs> that I got. Mm. And I remember, I think it was because it was the teacher, mm. Miss Owala, mm -hmm. and she's passed on now. Mm. Mm. And I was the kind of person who I'm smart. Mm. And growing up, I always wanted to go to school because mm -hmm. I would see my older siblings going. Yeah. Yeah. And so... And the lineage time, come they're from me. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Mm. 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 And so I would grab my backpack mm -hmm. and my mom would have me go with them in the car until the gate and mm -hmm. then I'm dropped at the main gate of the estate mm. and then they walk me back to the house. So there used to be a ritual of mm. me waking up, getting mm. dressed for school and I haven't actually started mm. school. Mm. And even in high school... It's a dry would, run, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> even when I would be picked from school, mm. I would do my homework in the car. Oh, wow. Yeah, because mm. I would be so ready mm. to, mm. let me see what I learned today mm. and I would do it in the cars. My mm. mom mm. is driving through traffic. Mm. So I think that growing up, I've always enjoyed that aspect mm. of mm. learning. Mm. And Miss mm. Owala saw that in mm. me because sometimes I would not pay attention in class. Mm. And so she, she's the only teacher who pulled me aside. Mm. And she said, you know, you're so smart. Mm. And, and this subject, you're really good at it. Mm. If you just focus, mm. you'll pass. And and I took her seriously and it's the only class that I passed well. Wow. wow. And I I sucked at chemistry. <laughs> I, I could not understand. Oh, what what are these? What are these yeah. things that yeah. we're adding and yeah. Yeah. drawing? And yeah. I couldn't. Mm. I would even stand in chemistry class because mm. I'm like, maybe I'm not paying attention enough. enough. Mm -hmm. And I would stand up and I would think if I focus, I'll get it. And I just didn't get it. Mm. Um, but physics, I was good at. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. So so at least there is a science that you're good at. Yeah. There's geography. How are you referring with the languages? You, re you mentioned at the beginning you are never good with Swahili. Never. Mm. At Aga Khan, <laughs> were you having to do Swahili? Not. I did eventually, mm -hmm. but then we were introduced to French. Yeah. So I did a bit of French. Mm. I still did Kiswahili mm. and English. I was really good mm. in terms of writing mm. and articulating. Mm. So mm. I remember there was a time we were going through, each of us had to pick a book that we are reading yeah. and share with the class what the book is about. Mm -hmm. And I remember not doing my assignment mm. and making the whole story up <laughs> about this book. Including the book title. <laughs> that I read. Yeah. And my teacher was like, wow, that's an amazing book. Hmm. Can you give me the book so that uh, I can uh, read it? Nothing. Uh, nothing. And <laughs> so, Miss um, Bugwa. Yeah. So I remember her saying, you're really good. Yeah, that's at, a creative at, thing. Yeah. <laughs> telling mm. stories. Yeah. And so you should continue yeah. articulating. Mm, mm, yeah. Mm. So you complete your high school studies at Aga Khan? Yes. Mm -hmm. So when I completed... At Aga Khan because my older siblings had already gone to the States. Yeah. They went to university in the US. Mm. Um, the school that my sister was in mm -hmm. 
had a scholarship program mm -hmm. at Jacksonville State University mm -hmm. in Alabama mm. and so she was like why don't you apply and see if you get it mm. and maybe you can start your first year mm. in the US mm -hmm. since I'm already here mm. um, I can take care of you the launching pad is easier yeah mm. and so I applied so I remember applying for all this we did our exams in July mm -hmm. So I applied in May mm. to go for mm. this. Before yeah, your exams. Before my mm. exams. Mm. So I remember our last day of school um, when we we're being asked, my class is being asked, what are you planning to do? Where are you planning to go? And I said, I'm planning to go to the States. And one of my teachers says, that's not possible. How, how did you apply for a scholarship without your results? Mm. Um, that doesn't make sense. Mm. Sure enough, I got accepted to the school mm, with your like equivalent of mocks. Yeah, mm. and they just requested that once I receive my results, mm. I you still send. I send them. Mm. So again, I didn't see my results. <laughs> my parents called me mm. while I was in the states. Oh, to read me my. So results. you went in the same year. Yes. Slightly after July. Yes. Ah, okay. Because so I was seventeen when I left. Yeah and i didn't know what i got in my exams mm. and i think the most difficult part was being at the airport and my mom this whole time she's been fine she's mm. been like yeah i think it's good for you it's good your sister is there i think you're gonna be okay then we get to the airport then you know how you're hugging everybody and then my mom looks at me and she says okay let's go home i'm like <laughs> what so the airport. She's coming to terms with the reality <laughs> that her, 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 her baby girl is going. So she looks at me and says, okay, let's go home. I'm like, mom, we're at the airport. I'm with my bags. Like, I just need to, to walk in. To board, yeah. And like I said, my father was in the aviation industry, so mm. he had a pass mm. for airport authority. He could walk me mm. until close to the plane. Mm. And so I look at her and they're just like, I'm trying to hold back tears. Mm. And I'm like, it's going to be okay. Mm. It's going to be okay. I'm ready. Mm. And she says, okay. She takes a deep breath. She says, okay. She says, you have to promise me every holiday you come, you come home. Mm. I say, I promise. Mm. So I walk in with my dad. And then now he drops me off and I hug him. And then now I'm in the plane. And then when the plane takes off, I... Cry. Everything. I well. <laughs> I really cried. Mm. I was like, "What am I doing? Mm. I am the seventeen. The unfamiliar. You are living the familiar. Yeah. Mm. I don't even have an ID. Mm. I'm like. So you're just operating on your passport and your <laughs> sister's presence. Yeah. Yeah. And so. Good thing it's it's family. I'm glad. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And so that's that's how I left. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I left. And, and so you arrive on that side, yeah. uh, um, you, you receive your exam results. Yes. Uh, did you get like immediately, did you start immediately? No, mm -hmm. I, I lived with my sister in Georgia mm -hmm. for about one month. Mm -hmm. And it was so different. Mm. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna manage mm. living here mm -hmm. because even the people who are my age, they already seemed so grown. Mm. Um, in the US. So my sister, she's trying to give me the 101 mm. of living on your own. Mm. So she would give me these different pep talks every day about, you know, this is how class is going to be. And I really thank her for that. She was like, you know, the first year you have the easy classes. Don't waste time. A lot of people are going to be partying mm. and going out. Mm. You focus on those classes mm. because by the time you come to your fourth year, those classes become hard. Yeah. And then you need the marks of your first year to yeah. lift you to pass. Mm. And so I really paid attention Too to, bad. yeah, mm. a lot of her advice. Mm. And so I made sure like my first years, I would have like all A's, mm. Dean list, mm. 4.0 GPA. Mm. And it, it came through. So <laughs> she really... Later years were yeah. a bit of a struggle. <laughs> <laughs> she really helped me mm. with the lessons that mm. she, she had. Learned. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And so I'm glad that I had that sort a of foreigner. shortcut. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Having a foreigner is good, and and then it 
it all then makes sense. The cycle of life makes sense that, you know, there was like a 10 year plus gap yeah. between you guys. So she had the experience yeah. and, 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 um, and so that time you're a young woman. Yes. Um, you know, you're in your late teens, yeah. <coughs> you're in a different country. What is, how are you though? Like as a, as a human, uh, mm. as a late adolescent, young, uh, young adult. Mm. <laughs> mm. I think when, when I moved in, because the scholarship program, we lived in a house, mm -hmm. it was called the International House. Mm -hmm. And so all my roommates were from different countries mm. and were 40 of us. Mm. And I'm the only Kenyan. Mm. And the only other African girl was a girl from Congo, mm -hmm. her name was Nina. Mm. And I remember the first night, because it was the fall, it was getting cold. Mm. And I remember my room being so empty. Mm and hmm. i felt so alone because hmm. now my sister hmm. she's gone back to georgia hmm. and now i'm on campus hmm. alone hmm. and i remember wondering am i gonna make it and my first day of class i was so shocked to see my classmates some of them in pajamas because it's a 7 30 a.m math class, class. Hmm. and so some of them have come in pajamas some of them are eating breakfast in class hmm. And I was like, what is this freedom? Mm. <laughs> like, and I remember uh, a math equation being put on the board. Mm -hmm. And the lecturer asks, who can solve this puzzle? And I'm like, oh, I, I can do it. So mm. I go and I do it. And Mrs. Kennedy, and she looks at me and she says, wow, okay. That's a different way of factoring. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so she's like, you are definitely not from here. And so she asked, where are you from? And I said, Kenya. And there's a girl at the back, Ashley. She yells, she's not from here. She's African. And before I knew it, I had the label of that African girl. Ooh. So and you're carrying a whole now continent I'm carrying <laughs> on your shoulders. <laughs> yeah, it's not even Kenya. Mm. Now you're the African mm. girl. And I realized that we're taught things so differently. Mm. So I had to almost relearn how they're taught things. Mm, mm. And it was the same with English and, you know, certain words. And pronunciations. Pronunciations, meanings. yes. Mm. And um, even the way their grammar is done, mm. the colons, mm. semicolons, mm. comma, they hardly use commas. Mm. And so just understanding that way of writing, my first year in uni, I failed English. Mm. Even though I just told you in high school, I was one of the best. That's interesting. Yeah. It's a culture so, shock. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I got a D minus. Oh, wow. My, my first English mm. course. Mm. And so I had to now, you know, I'm like, why am I failing? Mm. I know this stuff. Mm. And so I had to now relearn mm. um, what was now being taught to me mm. and learning that method. Mm. So mm. for me, mm. it was tough mm. uh, because you're still trying to understand the system yeah you're trying to like the food mm, yeah <laughs> trying I, hard to try yeah and and i remember one time i was going to class and that's the first time i saw snow yeah and so snow starts falling mm. and i am just i stop in the middle of this field i'm with my friends mm. they are european mm. so, so i mean they're, they're like this. Hey. Yeah. Mm. i'm like what is yeah. what is going on mm. and everyone is like laughing at me like you've never seen snow mm. i'm like no, no. Mm. this is what it looks like and then after i felt the cold i said god does not love this country <laughs> it is <not>. good conclusion <laughs> <laughs> people should not go through, go through that winter and, and and i mean but they have created systems around that, you know, like inside <laughs> rooms. It can be you warmer. know what, Maxi? Mm. Still, it still. It's still. <laughs> yeah. It's too cold. Yeah, it is too cold. It's and too I'm, cold. And I was in the south. Yeah, and so you have to experience it annually. <sighs> yeah. And in the south, it's worse. Uh -uh. Mm. It's better. Oh yes. The north yes. is yeah. is, it, is worse. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So, mm. but after I got the hang of it. Mm. I, I began to understand it better. And, and better. socially? Yeah, so socially, mm -hmm. a lot of my friends now ended up being from different countries. Mm. Um, but my roommate was American, mm -hmm. um, Melanie. Mm. And so... She was called Melanie? Melanie. All yeah. right. Not Melanie. Melanie. Me, but <laughs> <laughs> An American Melanie. That would be interesting. <laughs> They're fun few in between. <laughs> 
Yeah. So I would spend some of the holidays with her, oh, like right. Thanksgiving, um, when I wasn't going to see my family, mm. uh, because there's a point where my sister left to return to Kenya. All right. And I did enjoy college. Mm. I did everything that I wanted to do, mm. including joining a sorority. Mm -hmm. uh, so I am a member of Sigma Gamma Rho. Mm -hmm. uh, Sigma Gamma what? Rho. Mm -hmm. So mm. it's a sorority that was formed in 1922. Yeah. And I also joined student leadership. Yeah. Um, one year I was vice president, another mm. year I was elected president. Mm. Yes, mm. in 2009. Mm. And so I did everything, yeah. including even becoming an ambassador for the university. Oh, wow. And going to different high schools mm. uh, within the county mm -hmm. to just basically share about why students should join the mm. university and mm. why they should look mm. at joining Jack State. Mm. So I was very, very involved mm. on campus. So far till there, your story has, especially in college and in America, your story, other than a bit of culture change here and there, mm -hmm. it doesn't have those things that we hear often from a lot of us who go and live, you know, in the States about uh, racism, mm. around sexism, around the, the kinds of experiences you are having mm. in high school and mm. the, the kind of um, easisms that were happening <laughs> in high school. Did any of that mm. happen in a, in a different way? And how? what's your reflection on that? I did experience racism. Mm -hmm. I was in Alabama mm. and the school that I was in, literally 20 minutes is where Martin Luther King's bus mm. was stoned. Mm. And so the school is predominantly white. Mm. And when you're talking about 10,000 students mm. and a minority of them being um, African or mm. African-American, mm -hmm. I think what I found interesting was how Africans and African Americans just didn't get along. They didn't. They, they didn't get each other. Their experiences are very different. No, no, no. They mm. were just not friends with each other. Mm. Like African Americans didn't want to be associated with Africans, mm. so Africans would stick to themselves, mm -hmm. and African Americans would stick to themselves. Mm. Um, but somehow, like I said, you know, I'm that individual that fits in with everybody. Mm. So how I joined, it's a black American sorority. Mm. Mm. And even my sister asked me, how did you do that? Mm. Like Africans, we don't or we hardly mm. hang around African Americans. Mm. But I could and I did. Mm. And I had friends who were. Yeah. And I also started dating mm. um, around that age. Mm. And my first boyfriend was white mm. and and blonde Ooh. blonde white wow. blue eye wow. white and what his are, father what was his his, his uh, catcher <laughs> planes <laughs> it was in church oh. <laughs> that is where i was caught yeah but but his father was racist mm. and and i remember one day refusing mm. um to enter the house mm. Because he called me the N-word. Really? Yes. The dad? Yes, yes. My yeah. goodness. So, you know. He... But he, the, the, the son, your, your, your boyfriend was advanced. He wouldn't treat you in any... No. Mm. No, he wouldn't. Um, but some of his family, not so much. Mm. And it was really strange because his sister, her husband was black. Mm. And so their kids... They had three mixed, children. Yeah. Mm. They're mixed. Mm -hmm. And so it made me wonder what he says around them. Mm. Um, but he basically said that I can't come into the house because I am black. And it is even worse because at least her husband was black American. Mm. I was African. African. Yeah. I am African black. And at the time I had uh, dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. And I shaved them off maybe my third year. Mm -hmm. And so when I shaved my dreadlocks off, I had short hair, just mm. the way I keep it now. Mm. And so I would keep it rugged. Mm. And I remember one day walking through the Walmart, through mm. the supermarket, mm. and there was a black American lady who was so mad at me. She's like, why would you keep your hair like that? Why would you do that? Like, 
this whole conversation on on race, mm. skin color, mm, hair. hair, yeah, is is a very deeply rooted conversation in the U.S. Mm. where, especially black people would feel insulted mm -hmm. that you're walking around like that and you're spreading and showing your nappiness. Mm. And so me wearing my hair like this is political. Mm. It's political. And I choose this mm. because this is who I am. Come on. So I think I just, I just downplayed the racism because I was there when Obama won presidency. Mm -hmm. And I tell people all the time, living in a house where by then I had moved out of the international house as now living with a lot of white um, colleagues. Mm. And the station we watched was Fox News. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all of us in mm. Alabama were watching Fox News. Mm. Mm. So I remember watching Tech news. news. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> It's 11, it's 12, and they're still showing Obama and McCain neck and neck. And we're literally all in the living room waiting for the announcement of who the 44th president is. Mm. And I remember calling a friend of mine. We went to primary together mm -hmm. and he moved to the U.S. a long time ago. He mm. lives in California, mm. Gibson. Mm. So I called Gibson. I said, this thing is crazy. It's becoming like Kenyan elections mm. where you're waiting so long mm. for a result to come out. Mm. And he says, what? I'm like, see, we're waiting for, he says, Obama is our president. What are you talking about? He's already about? been announced by all other media. He was announced an hour, hour ago. ago. Oh God. So he's like, you can't hear. So he, he puts his phone mm. he's outside. I could hear people screaming. The joy. And I'm like... So there's a reason then that Fox News is called fake news. Yeah. I'm like, we don't know. Like, My goodness. A whole state, state is behind I didn't news. know. My family in Kenya knew. Be I didn't know. I was in Alabama. It is difficult to reconcile that. It's crazy. And yeah. we didn't talk about it in mm. the US. Mm. And this is something that I am always shocked mm. that this happened. Mm. And and now they announce it, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. it shows Obama has been announced the forty fourth, mm. and you can see from the presenters, mm. they are sad. Mm. They are so angry mm. that they're like Obama is the forty fourth president, and that was it. So there's um, there's a, there was clearly an agenda. Yeah, mm. and so now around me, people are quiet. Me, I'm happy. I can't celebrate. So there was another girl called Trina. Mm -hmm. Uh, who lived in the same house as me, and mm. we're excited. So as mm. we ran to the corner, and we're hugging each other, <laughs> and we're like, Obama is bad. Yeah. Like, the president is black. But yeah. you can't even... Voice it enough. You can't now. voice it. So she's like, we have to go outside. Yeah. Because we're like, we have to meet yeah. with the others who are happy. So we yeah. go outside, and by then, you know, the Africans, the African-Americans, or anyone who's mm. not racist mm. is outside. Yeah, it's clearly. And mm. we're celebrating, and you could see people watching us celebrate they're looking outside from the window watching us celebrate and i'm like this is looking dangerous because mm. remember we're in a country where people own guns mm. Mm. so i'm like okay i'm gonna go home mm. so now home, then, home as in in my building okay all right yeah so now the the next day is mm. class mm. we're going to class mm. so when we go to class there was graffiti um, all over the walls, the N-word. Jeez. There's no way my president is black. I mean, the school walls have been vandalized. And so we're in class. Wow. And I remember going to class and it was a governance class and hmm. we're three. <laughs> the irony. It's a yeah. governance class, yeah? We're three. Mm. three. Only or three of you only? Only. Mm. In a class of like 60 people. We're three. Mm. And all three of us are black. Mm. And so the professor walks in and he says, so because of the turnout, I don't think we're going to have class today. Um, there was an announcement from the school. School was closed mm. for two days. Mm -hmm. But when you looked at the professors, you could see they had been crying mm. like the whole night. Like people were still in shock. Mm. Like how did this happen? And there were a lot of warnings, you know, don't over celebrate. 
um because it would lead to like random fights because mm. people just are angry yeah and they can target you mm. so there's a lot of you know try to stay cool stay mellow mm. so we couldn't even openly celebrate mm. obama's first win mm. and yet it's it was the historical one the. other states are Oh, Joyous, that yes. what was on CNN was I don't know California, you know, no, no, Georgia. Yeah. yeah, there should be people celebrating. Yeah. They are not showing Alabama. Yeah, red states, mm. red states. Mm. So when Trump won, I wasn't surprised. Mm. I said it was only a matter of time mm. because there was a bitter population mm. Mm. that had to make sure mm. that trump was in and might have taken them eight years yeah but, but they did yeah mm. because i even told my husband like i am not stepping foot in the u.s as long as trump is president and mm. i did it mm. and by then as mm. soon as he breath, he got in mouth mm. in the u.s mm. last year mm. i was like mm. I will not. In the, we, but I'm, I'm more comfortable in, in this. Yeah, because yeah. I saw, I saw how things changed so quickly, overnight, um, overnight mm. because of Obama what, swing. Yeah, mm. what the president supports and encourages. Yeah. Because you would find like certain comments mm. flying. For instance, just you know, not being like you're driving through a town and you're told you know just be careful you know with this place just mm. try not to be here mm. too late mm. things like that where mm. you're like when 2000 mm. like how am i mm. concerned about being in certain areas yeah. or in certain spaces mm. Mm. but that's america and at that time with for that period how did life change for you with with that win and with that time um mm. I think so right before Obama mm -hmm. was Bush. Yeah. And with Bush there was a huge clamp down on immigrant citizens. Yeah. yeah. So even my status mm. was checked. Mm. Um if I'm driving uh, to class or to work, mm. you could be pulled over because of maybe your light is not working and they'll ask, they ask oh they could, find, they could just find a reason. Yeah. Mm. They're like, oh, uh, oh, you are a student, you're an international student. Let me, let me see. And so they would check my status mm. and say, oh, you're in good status. Mm. And a few people who were in school with us, if you are not passing, yeah, if you didn't have like a, a 3.0 or was it 2.5, there's a GPA. And above. Mm. Uh, if you go home for the holidays, the way you see Kenyans coming home for December, you'd not be allowed back. You would not be allowed back yeah. under bush. Yeah. But, and by the way, an aside, did you end up <laughs> honoring your mom's wish of returning to see yes. her every, 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 every holiday? holiday. Yeah? Yes. Okay. All right. Every yeah. holiday. Okay. Great. Let's go back. And you would return. I mean, your I status would. was fine. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I was working hard. Mm. And mm. so they would, they would check your grades. They're mm. like, okay, you're a good student. You can come back to America. Mm. But these other ones, mm. they would literally stop you at the airport mm. and you turn around. There are people who didn't come back. At that time you are also in like student leadership yeah yeah so this election is it, it has an impact on you it has on, on on like what your values are or rather your values you have to keep um checking mm -hmm. against what what the state is happening but also you're beginning to rise as a leader what's going on with you at mm. that time mm. so for me to become president mm -hmm. the africans are too little mm. exactly <laughs> and there was no in, way in, in a state like Alabama. I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there was I think we were like five Kenyans, mm. you know. Mm. And there was no way um Europeans were going to vote for me. Mm. And when I talk about European, it's like Montenegro, mm. Serbia, mm. Czech Republic, like mm. some mm. of those countries. Almost on the extreme, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So Russia, Ukraine. Mm. So mm. um I knew that the only strategy I had was Asians. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, you share global southness. Yes. Yeah. And they were quite a number. A number. Mm. Especially Japanese students. Mm. Our our school had a center mm. for English, mm. the English Language Institute. Mm. So a lot of Japanese students mm. would come into the country because of that institute. Right. And so I became a friend mm. of that community. Mm. 
and majority of them are the ones who voted me in. Mm, mm. But you had to like do the whole campaign and yes, yeah. I had to do the whole campaign and get people out to vote for me. Mm. It's different because there's no bribery yeah. or the yeah. violence. Yeah. Um, but I think people were shocked that an African I can imagine. lady yeah. won presidency. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it only had happened maybe like 10 years before mm. where the lady before me was from uh, Mozambique. Mm. And so it's very few of us mm. Um, mm. that have actually gotten to that level. Mm. But until today, I still have um, a very close relationship with Japan. Yeah. And, and Japan is one of my favorite, favorite. countries. Mm. Um, even in my home, I have mm. a lot of things mm. that pay tribute to Japan mm, mm. and I've been to Japan mm. and plan on going several times again mm. and just their whole view on life mm. Mm. and how they view life and the characteristics that they instill in their children mm, mm. I grew to respect yeah. on, on campus yeah. yeah interesting that you I mean you I didn't just befriend them to win, but also to begin to appreciate their culture and what other values mm. that they have. Um, and so besides student leadership, besides the moments that um, you have in and you pass in your, you know, your exams and, and grades and dating. <laughs> so a lot of other things are happening in this period. Mm -hmm. um, are you beginning to imagine what you want to do? Oh, yes. Mm. Wow. I can't believe we skipped that one. Mm. Um, I always thought I wanted to be a doctor. Mm -hmm. From my young age. From my young mm -hmm. age. And even to date, sometimes my uncle still calls me Daktari. Mm. Uh, but then as I grew older, I realized this is not my career path. Mm. And, and chemistry is becoming a chemistry. challenge. <laughs> <laughs> chemistry and me. <laughs> We're not friends. Yeah, you're not having chemistry. <laughs> friends yeah. and and even in high school mm. they have like a job shadow mm. where you're able to work with someone who is in that career for mm. a week mm. and so i was fortunate enough mm. to work with someone from uh, aga khan hospital mm. a doctor mm. and i remember that week he had a patient young i think he was 19 years old mm. and his leg was just amputated mm. and so i remember finding that so heavy mm. emotionally mm. see someone so young mm. going through that mm. and so i was actually taken to like uh, this storage room not really quite the morgue mm. where they put the leg mm. and, and being shown mm. you know this is what, <laughs> mm. this is what happens mm. you know after the leg is amputated and just being shown you know this sort of mixture and mm. then being informed that you know after a leg is amputated the nails still grow and so i think they were expecting me to be like wow really but i was like i was so traumatized i was like i can't do this mm. i can't do this mm, mm. and so that was sort of where i began to try to find something else to edge out of um mm -hmm. being medicine basically medicine mm. but i didn't tell my parents mm. So by the time I'm in the US, mm. I still took biology. Mm. Also, the your undergraduate was yes. in biology? No. Mm. <laughs> I ended up changing it because my first year I took biology mm -hmm. and I would pass mm. getting 90s. Mm. But it was just not where my heart was. Yeah. So I changed to communications mm. and sociology. Mm. So I double majored. Mm. But I didn't tell my parents until maybe three years mm. three and a half years when you when you almost when i was graduating, graduating. Mm. because mm. i wasn't sure how i was going to say yeah, yeah. i have changed yeah and yeah. especially to communication <laughs> not maybe to another science because I'm, I'm sure parents at that time they're looking at options that are you know science <laughs> lawyer no. engineering <laughs> exactly yeah. Yeah. so i ended up just doing um broadcast mm. journalism mm. Mm. and you enjoyed that I loved it so much. Did it you was... have practicums like in some of the US um, media houses? I worked on the campus uh, uh, TV stations. station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. but that's as much mm -hmm. as I did. I never really utilized mm -hmm. my degrees. Because you started imagining <laughs> a, a different career path? Or, no, or, or... <laughs> it, it just, it, 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 it sort of fell on me because mm -hmm. after I graduated mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. it's like, I knew if I went back home, mm. uh, I'm not going to go back to school. Yeah. 
And so I knew for my mother especially, mm. it was really important that we all get our masters. Mm. And so I just said, you know what? Let me just go straight into masters right. and complete. Mm. And so the school offered only one scholarship for mm. masters. Mm. And that was public administration. Uh -huh. So that's how I ended up doing a bit of governance mm. work. Mm -hmm. And so now when I had public administration and this uh, journalism background mm -hmm. as well mm. in comms, mm. I, <laughs> before I graduated from my master's, mm. I got fired from my job. <laughs> mm -hmm. I got fired. Mm. <laughs> Because I stole a bicycle. Wait, 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 wait. Because I stole a wait. bicycle. <laughs> so which job was it first? Why were you stealing a bicycle? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It doesn't make sense because... Yeah. Okay. I worked on campus. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. At the station? No, no, no. Different. I did so many jobs on yeah. campus. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Mm. So one of my first jobs... The work jobs, study programs. Yes. Okay. So one of my first jobs was working in the cafeteria. Mm -hmm. I didn't last long because mm. I was not understanding how I'm serving so much food and I'm not allowed to eat. Oh, okay. And we were not given breaks. Mm. So it was so bad, mm. the working conditions, mm. that even a co-worker, she just gave birth. The mm. baby's one week mm. and the baby's there in the baby cot as she works. She's... That's how bad, oh, like... Man working conditions mm, right mm, mm. so anyway so i leave that job mm. and i go and end up tutoring mm -hmm. uh for a bit mm. and then what were you tutoring i was mainly tutoring math mm. and geography yeah for like high school students no mm. university Ca now. campus all yeah right. mm. so now like first years mm. second years mm. Mm. and then i did tutoring for a bit mm. and then now did you enjoy that yeah mm. i enjoyed it mm. although most of the people who needed the tutoring mm. were the football players or mm. the basketball players mm. because they have to have a certain gpa to right. remain to on continue the team. On a scholarship yeah mm. yeah mm. so after tutoring i ended up now working in the residence halls mm -hmm. so in the hostels mm -hmm. so i was sort of the like manager for mm. one of the biggest female hostels mm -hmm. on campus mm -hmm. which i saw a lot of things mm. Hey, even drugs, mm. um, people, what? hey, people tripping mm. on the drugs. 10 p.m. Hey, 2 a.m. Oh my goodness. 3 a.m. Mm. You mm. are on the clock. Mm. Um, stopped a suicide. Mm. Yeah, a lot, mm. a lot. Mm. And so now it was within that residence mm -hmm. hall's job mm. that I got fired from. Mm. Uh, because now mm. at this point, mm. My brother has joined me, my younger brother. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, mm. my younger brother has joined me. Mm. And now, same, same campus. Same campus. Mm. And now that uh, we don't really have to travel home every summer, mm. because now we have each mm. other, mm. one summer we stay mm. back. Mm. We don't go to Kenya. Mm. And what happens is when the schools close, especially the summer, mm -hmm. a new year starts in September, mm. the fall. Mm. And so, a lot of kids end up throwing a lot of stuff. Mm. So like they don't pack it. Mm. Uh, they basically leave it on the mm. sidewalk. Right. And so guys pick up stuff and all that. Yeah. So a lot of things that are left behind are bicycles. Mm. All right. So mm -hmm. I'm here, I'm bored. I'm with my brother. It's summer. There's no one on campus. You can count us. We're like five. Mm. We're few. Mm. And so I'm like, let's ride through the park. Mm. Oh, we don't have bicycles. Mm. Oh, there are bicycles. Mm. Yeah. Pick one. We pick one. Mm. Yeah. I forgot I'm in Alabama. Mm. And you're black. And I'm black. And you're from Africa. <laughs> 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 oh my gosh. That is the first time I was in a police station. They took what? <laughs> no, it was it was like an offense. That's serious. Yeah. But how do you re reconcile that this is out for like you, you should be able to pick? Honestly, and, mm. um, I think that the case was escalated. Mm. Honestly, mm. because uh, it's you, because it's me mm. and a lot of uh, things were trumped up mm. that I didn't even fight it. Mm. Uh, so my brother was so hurt because he felt like it was his fault. Mm. He was like, if I wasn't here, you wouldn't, mm. you know, want to spend time with me and do mm. things with me. Mm. You would have probably never thought of this. Would mm. have. And I just told him because I remember 
being called to staff meeting mm -hmm. and there were like 20 people mm -hmm. in the boardroom mm -hmm. and I knew I was getting fired uh, because the director was sitting at the head and the whole room is quiet and I was called in and I remember sitting and you know basically explaining to me the offenses uh, because I had to go to the police station and write a statement and you know he says you know we have to terminate your contract so you have 48 hours because that job gave me a scholarship and it also paid for my housing mm. and so they basically said you know because because of what you did you have 48 hours to leave your house mm. and find a place to stay and mm. figure out how you're going to finish school i had one semester left oh man and so ah, people around me were crying you'd think it's them who are fired mm. so they're crying they can't believe it and i'm just like it's okay it'll be done and so i go back and you know i call my family of course they are panicking what are you going to do because how are we going to come up with your school fees yeah you know you're going to school next month mm. how we you are on scholarship we had mm. not planned mm. how what are we gonna do mm. so i say you know what uh we'll figure out our way so mm. i pack with my brother and we move to the international house remember i told you yeah. where i got the scholarship mm -hmm. i talked to the director there mm -hmm. since it's the summer there's no one living there mm -hmm. Um, can I just live here for one month mm. until I figure out mm. um, how to get another job right. and pay for school? Mm. And it was in that moment, uh, my friend, Libya, mm. <laughs> she paid my school fees for the oh. last time. Yeah, she did. And um, I... <laughs> that is hard. Anyway, mm. so mm. she paid my school fees for me. Um, didn't ask any questions mm. or for me to pay her back mm. and I got another job just mm. by talking to people mm. and saying I need a job for mm. one semester mm. and I'm done mm. and I got another job in uh, Dr. Clark's office which mm -hmm. was in the graduate school mm. so as a graduate assistant mm. and I graduated mm. Mm. I graduated so first of all <laughs> kudos and hats off to to libya, libya. i know yeah. Yeah, yeah and she she was a friend like just the yes. relationship is just your friend she was a friend mm. she was a friend mm. and then eventually after i graduated mm. we actually got an apartment together so mm. she eventually became my roommate mm. for was she same year yes okay she was mm. the same year as mm. me american mm. and we lived together mm. after graduate school mm. uh, because I wanted to do an internship. Right. And she was also deciding whether to move to her hometown. Mm. She was from another hometown mm. or to stay on the campus. Mm. And so I started applying for internships. Mm -hmm. And there was one that I saw in DC. Mm -hmm. And I told her I was going to apply to it. And I was like, you know, what are the chances? I'll be selected mm. because I'm sure there are thousands of students, especially mm. from Ivy League, like Princeton, Harvard, who apply because it was one of the, it is one of the largest NGOs mm. in the world. Mm -hmm. And so I applied anyway. Mm. Mm. And I remember getting a call a week later and they say, we got hundreds of applications, uh, but we selected yours. Because it says you understand Kiswahili. Mm. <laughs> that same Kiswahili. <laughs> that you struggled with before. Yeah. So they're like, are you really from Kenya? Mm. And I'm like, yeah, I am. And they're like, can you do an internship in Washington, D.C.? Mm. Can you start next week? Wow. So I remember I said yes, even though I didn't know how I'm going to move. It's an 11-hour drive. Oof. Okay. Okay. That's far. Far. Mm. I don't know how I'm going to move. Mm. How am I, what am I going to do with my brother? Mm. Um, and so Libya comes home mm. that day mm -hmm. and I'm telling her, your roommate now, she needs to leave. Mm. I don't know how you're going to figure out rent. Mm. Neither do I. Because mm. this internship doesn't pay. Yeah. And so just when I was about to tell her, hey, I got a call. Like, I got a job. <laughs> oh. And she's like, yeah, I got a job. The serendipity yes. is amazing but i have to move mm. next week oh and i say me too look at we that. just look at each other like wow so we packed up the house um most of the things i couldn't carry i left with my brother mm. but everything i could carry mm. uh, basically fit in the back of my car mm. 
and my brother drove with me mm. uh, 11 hours. Also, he took you. He took me mm. Uh, mm. to DC. Mm. And so by then, mm. I had some friends who had graduated and some had moved mm. back home. Mm-hmm. Some of them were from Maryland, mm. which is not far yeah, from DC. From DC. Mm. And so one of them, I asked if I could live with her, mm-hmm. in, even if it's a basement mm. or a space, mm. until I figure out myself. Mm. She agreed. And to, so, so you lived in Maryland? Yeah. Mm. So I lived in Maryland. Mm. And then I started my internship in one of the largest NGOs in the world. Mm. And so you'd commute daily? Yes. So where would you like get the resources for just even daily? I started now working in the mall. Uh, so you had your internship going plus? I had to get two other jobs. Two other jobs. Yeah. That's the life that at times people don't speak about. Yeah. You know? It's uh, hard. Yeah. That it's never one thing. No, it's yeah. not. Mm. I mean, it's, I think that's how I am trained to survive mm. on minimal sleep, mm-hmm. unfortunately. Mm. Because sometimes I would be in between jobs mm. that I would just need one hour to nap. To nap. And you're probably and, napping on the road. Yeah. Like in transit. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Mm. And so sometimes I would skip lunch mm. just so that I could sleep from 12 to 1 mm. and then continue. Mm. With Do another work. shift. Yeah. So you worked at the mall. What was the other job? My other job was waitressing as well. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Wow. How would you split those hours? I mean, I, I hear mm. what you're saying about sleep, but so the internship would be what comes in the morning? In the morning. Mm-hmm. So I'd be in the office. I'd be one of the first in the office by 7 a.m. Mm. And then I would leave the office by 2 p.m. Mm. I've left the office. Mm-hmm. So now I'm able to go to the mall, be at the mall by 3.45. Mm. And then I would do another four hour shift. Mm. So until around 7.45. Then drive back to Maryland to sleep. Yeah. Then start the, the next day. Same routine. And Same routine. your job at the internship included a lot of what translation, interpretation? Yeah, it mainly included um, some, they would get a lot of footage from Congo on some mm-hmm. of the work that they are doing. Mm. So it would be very like uh, conversations between individuals. So getting an understanding of the context. Mm-hmm. And so I was able to do that, mm. uh, surprisingly. Mm-hmm. And I would help mm. in putting context, especially for reports mm. that now came from these countries because mm. the organization worked in about 35 countries. Mm. Mm. That's amazing. <laughs> so um, how long did this period of triple shifts <laughs> mm. go for you? It lasted my whole internship, which was about one year. Wow. One year. Mm. And then um, after I, I was done with my internship, I remember wondering now what to do because... What, what happened to your boyfriend? Oh, hey. <laughs> I, mean, I, I don't want to, us to lose him somewhere. I would need to carry him along the way if he continued. <laughs> he did not continue. <laughs> uh, okay, all right. He did not continue. Yeah. It was a very dramatic end. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So... That huh. hopefully did not involve the dad. No. Okay. Uh, it didn't involve the dad. So that boyfriend ended up entering into drugs. Oh, okay. Entering into drugs. So he started stealing stuff. Mm. And I think the last thing he stole that broke it off for me was now my roommate's laptop. Oh. And asking him about it and and him denying it and me believing him until you know there's just that spirit in you yeah. it's the holy spirit yeah <laughs> he just kept telling me this guy this guy yeah. this guy yeah. and so one day out of my own volition i i go to the administrative block and mm-hmm. i ask for the security cameras mm. and i'm like give me this day mm. this time mm. And they're like, why? That's so specific. Mm. And I said, because that is the only time I was not with this guy. Mm. But we were together in the building. Mm. That's the time. I'm sure I went to the bathroom, I think. Mm. And I'm not sure Mm. if he left the room. Mm. And so they checked. Sure enough, he was there carrying. um, It was he was carrying a a jacket, but you could see there's something. Yeah, inside. I said, that's it. That's the laptop. Mm. And so it's so funny. And, you know, um, it, it would 
it, it's defeating to 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 think that it's it's um, a, a white guy from <laughs> in a family that has a middle-aged white man as the dad that's calling you the n-word and then that they are the ones to come and then crime. do crime crime that is associated mostly with the black community and especially maybe perhaps that would be expected a lot more from black community from africa yeah. so the irony yeah the crazy. irony crazy so after that mm. um we broke up mm. and then i just began to distance myself from mm. him mm. And then now after that breakup, I started dating someone else mm. from Zambia. Mm. And then he actually met my mother. Mm. And it was so interesting because my mother met him and she looked at him. She said, if he can, my mom, she speaks like in Proverbs. Mm. Not that I mm. <laughs> don't if, you think about in, it. Yeah, yeah. not that I think about yeah. it. Yeah. She in those said, deep African I Proverbs know. that you're like, hmm, what did you say? <laughs> what did you mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So she says, the way I see him, if he cannot bend for you mm. and you do all the bending, you will break. Mm. And I broke up with him mm. because it was a very simple thing. Mm. We were going to church and I told you how important church is to mom. Mm -hmm. And so I asked him, uh, you know, are you coming to church with us? And he made a comment, he's SDA mm -hmm. and I'm Protestant. Mm. So me, I've been going. Mm to SDA churches on Saturday. For him. For him. Mm. Uh, I am not even wearing earrings. Oh. I am yeah. not oh, even yeah. wearing trousers. Mm. You know, Ooh. I have done the whole SDA mm. conversion mm -hmm. here mm. for him. Mm. And so since mom is around, I'm like, hey, let's take mom to her church mm. on Sunday. Mm. We never do. Let's just mm. go. Mm. And so he says, no. He says, I can't take... I can't go to a church where the, the pastor is wearing jeans. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait, is this now? Are you in DC? <laughs> this is before DC. Okay, before. Oh, wow. Okay. And so my mom overhears that. Oh. So that's why she told me that in the car. If you can bend. Yes. Yeah, and you do all the bending. If you do mm. all the bending, mm. you will break. Mm. And so that's when I just knew it was over. This so in DC, it. I was, mm. I was, mm. I was not really with someone. Yeah. 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 So you're doing these three things. And then how does that year come to an end for you? That year comes to an end where I've tried to look for jobs. I can't find any. Mm. I'm broke mm. because DC is very expensive very. and I'm overworking. Mm. So I finally tell my mother, you know what? Let me come home. Mm. Uh, let me come home. Mm. So interestingly, mm. at the office, they had the organization is called Search for Common Ground. It still exists. Yeah, it does. Yeah. So, I, I, okay. You now know that it, you put the context, uh, now that you give the name, I see the context and I appreciate that you actually were part of that. I was. Mm. I am the one who established mm. the Kenya office. Beautiful. So when you came to Kenya, that's yeah. All when right. I, when I said I'm moving back to Kenya. Mm. They said we are actually interested in having an office in Kenya. Nice. So, can you set that up for us? Stars are aligning nicely. Yeah. So yeah. here I am. Yeah. So now it's a job. It's a job. Mm. Yeah. Mm. At at 22, mm. I am a director. Mm. Yeah. The African director, mm -hmm. because then there is no other. They don't. Do they have any other offices across the region? Maybe I say. Mm. At the time, they had in Rwanda. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So a lot of my work would be to travel to Rwanda to mm. coordinate mm. our work with the mm. regional director mm. there, mm -hmm. Rebecca. Mm. Um, but even to date, I'm still in the process of removing myself as a director and mm. search for common ground mm. in Kenya. Mm. Yeah, mm. so hopefully mm. that will be finalized. Soon. This year. This year. Yeah. Your, how does that look like for you now? I mean, yes, you've had a lot of experience in different things. The exposure is immense. Uh, but now here you are charged with a very huge responsibility. You're yeah. very young. Yeah, very young. Yeah. 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 How, how is that going for you? Uh, uh, and uh, is that the primary reason? I mean, not the primary reason. So you tell your mom you want to come back. Is this the first thing that you actually no, can do? No. Mm -hmm. So when I came back, this wasn't solid. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So when I came back, it had back, been discussed, but not. Yes, mm -hmm, it finalized. wasn't solidified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now, when when I was back, mm. it's when now I got the email that we want to start uh, the process. All right. 
and so i didn't re- i didn't tarmac for mm, long mm. maybe two weeks ah, okay and then now i had to start the process mm. of registering a company mm, mm. that is foreign run in yeah, kenya yeah and dealing with the lawyers and the, the nuances system. are different yes yeah the system here mm. and so just that whole mm. process of a bank account mm. is what i now started to do mm. And 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 that was now my move to mm, Kenya. Mm, what I was mm, focusing mm, on. And your your was how was this this many years after you've left. Mm. Um, but and this is the first time you're coming to stay as an adult. Mm. How is that going for you? How did that go for you? Sorry. It time? it was it was it was hard because I didn't have friends. Mm, exactly. Yeah. When mm. I left, all my friends were in high school. Yeah. So now. They're, they are they're gone. They are gone. They've yeah. made other relationships, other friends. Yeah. Other friends. Some are probably married. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Or children. Mm. So I ended up now attending like meetings in in hotels to get to meet people within the sector mm. so that I can build friendships there. Mm-hmm. So I would I am pan-africanist. Mm-hmm. So I'd attend either government meetings, mm. pan-african meetings, mm-hmm. just things that are of interest. Mm. I would just uh, invite myself mm. to them. <laughs> what what does inviting yourself look like? <laughs> Because that I uh, don't to skip over that. Like you would check no where we have a me- meeting at the Hilton. Yeah, like online, like mm. you know how someone is sharing like oh today today we have an event yeah. it's about you know pan africanism yeah. and we are celebrating Africa day or yeah. something yeah. you It know here here those. come join us. Mm. I would join. Mm. Mm. And and it's out of those gatherings mm. that I began to meet people who mm. have similar interests mm-hmm. as me and mm. and building relationships. Mm. And I also started to blog mm. around that time, mm-hmm. just writing about, you know, some of these engagements, mm. my experiences, mm. and I started this like website called Visionaries Allowed mm-hmm. um with That's my cool. Yeah, mm. with my cousin Miriam mm. and my friend Besho, mm-hmm. the one who gave mm. me the name Nerima. Mm. Mm. And and I would, you know, write articles on there about my experience and mm. people would be like you're really funny and mm. all that. Mm. And so one day I meet someone called uh, Murabwa Mudari mm-hmm. mm-hmm. at one of these meetings. It was at uh, Africa uh, All Churches mm-hmm. uh, Desmond Tutu, I don't know yeah. the whole the Westlands. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so he comes up to me and he's like, I think I read your blogs. Mm. He's like, you're Nerima, right? And I'm mm. like, yeah. It's like, you do? I'm even surprised that someone mm. reads. Mm-hmm. And he's like, I think you have an interesting mind. And I've been thinking about creating like a hub, mm. especially for young people mm. that are interested in governance. And I'm mm. like, you know what? Mm. I think that's something that I can actually help. build mm. and I'm like we can do it mm. so it's like yeah let's set up a meeting so you you knew you would love to do that first building off from your student leadership there but also you began identifying why such mm. a course would be important in the country exactly mm. because I already had the experience of of working in in a large NGO mm. that does a lot of work in Africa mm. however seeing how in the headquarter office the voice of the african youth is not there this this uh, it's disconnected for yeah. them mm. so mm. i could already see that gap and mm. the need mm. to now create a space that is for young people to directly engage mm. with this international world mm-hmm. and so that's so that was the beginning of mm. of siasa place mm. Mm. Yeah, and you called it siasa place at yes. the very beginning yes oh wow yes oh, actually wow. he said it's called siasa place i don't care what else you do with yeah, it <laughs> yeah. but the name is siasa place yeah yeah let's now journey through siasa place so you you think through it you put it together what the, what did that look like from get go and why um yeah you're seeing the gap with with like connecting african issues to um where there is more resource where there is more decision makers but also in the country mm. are you beginning to realize the gap what what period is it what years are they what what's the political social environment mm. um and how does that push your cause you more towards your cause so when we started having these conversations i came back in 2013 mm-hmm. and so just after the election exactly right just after the election mm-hmm. and then now we started having these conversations on 
what's happening in the country mm -hmm. and you know Murabo and I we sit down he actually had a list of I think I don't know if it was 50 about 50 people mm -hmm. either 50 it can't be 100 because that would have been too long mm -hmm. it was about 50 people mm -hmm. that he had written that he thought that were dynamic mm -hmm. and he was like these are people that mm -hmm. we need on either the advisory mm -hmm. or board level because mm -hmm. we know we want to change the way politics is being done in our mm -hmm. country mm -hmm. And these are people who are already doing things differently. Mm. So they are, you know, this long list. And we sat down in um, a restaurant in Nairobi, CBD, mm. Mm. just going through each name. Mm. Each name. Mm. That was the first time I saw Boniface Mwangi. Mm. So Boniface Mwangi was there. Mm. Karen Wakuli mm. was there. Harriet Chigai mm. was there. Uh, Michael Ora was mm. there. Mm. Paulino Woko was there. Nice. Uh, Bilo Hassan was mm. there. Mm. And so, we basically went through all these names and said, Nafula Wafula, mm. who would we be able to reach to talk to mm. and convince them to mm. be part of us? Mm -hmm. And so the names that I said are the ones that we zeroed in. in. Yeah, so they are like your entry points and I'm sure they would have other names. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I had never met Boniface Mwangi before. Mm. And mm. so I end up uh through these interactions and meetings we had started having twitter conversations mm -hmm. so siasa place was formed on twitter before anyway. before it was formed uh, um like established as a, a forward unit exactly mm -hmm. and so by this point we've also identified people who can help us with the team yeah so we <laughs> went to an art gallery there was a conversation i think it was being led by Irungo Hilton mm -hmm. and Amnesty. Amnesty. Mm. And then back then he I'm was. I'm looking for you, Irungo. <laughs> <laughs> back then he was in SID. Mm. Actually, it's it's actually Irungo who introduced me to Michael Ora. Okay. So it's then when we had Shefa Okore talking. Mm. And Murabwa looked at me and was like, she's perfect. Yeah. And so it was after that meeting we pushed her. Yeah. So literally, everyone. It on, was very organic. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone on the initial team, mm. we just met at our function. Yeah. And we were like, we connect on an issue. Like that. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. So by this point, that mm. team of seven mm. was formed. Mm. And I could not go far without my cousin, mm. Miriam Obara. Mm -hmm. And I, because she's the one who has been involved with me with the website, mm. with my blogging. Mm -hmm. And then I could not go far with Ken Ogembo, mm. who's still with me today mm. as program manager. Mm. Uh, because when I was with Search for Common Ground, mm -hmm. the work we would do in Mombasa, mm. Ken is the one who would help me. Right. So mm. I brought Ken along. on board. Mm. And so the, the rest we sort of met mm. uh, sporadically. Mm. And so now, because now CSL Place is online mm -hmm. and we are engaging, people are beginning to know the name but mm. don't know the faces mm -hmm. behind it, mm. I get invited to a meeting in Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And that's where now I met. Uh, Boni. Mm -hmm. That's why I met Boni. You both had received separate invites. Yes. Mm. And that's when now... And it's a meeting around just governance. Governance, mm -hmm. yes. Mm. And, and young people mm -hmm. who engage on governance mm -hmm. in the continent. Mm. And so started sharing the idea of CSA Place to him. Mm. And he's like, I think I've met someone who's mm. talked to me about it. And I said, yes, that's Murabwa. Mm. We're on the same team. Mm. Mm. And so all these people... Mm. Uh, even Karen Wakol, it was one of my first times mm. meeting her, mm. was just introducing mm. what we're doing and they were on board. Yeah. And and that's how it began mm. to get structure. Mm. Uh, we started to have more forums. Mm -hmm. A lot of our forums were at archives because mm -hmm. it was free. Yeah. And we would only buy snacks mm. and just talk about the governance in the country, mm. the constitution, mm. and understanding the constitution better. In essence, you'd bring this, some of these individuals to be like the speakers, moderators, conversationalists. Exactly, mm. exactly. Mm. exactly. Mm. And they also played a huge role in guiding us, mm. like because they already had their own entities. Yeah. And, you know, giving us advice mm. on, you know, maybe this would work better here, mm. this would be better mm. with this. Mm. And also just making Siasa Place more official mm -hmm. so getting it registered mm. doing all the paperwork mm. the structures the, the structures systems, yeah, yeah. Mm. but that was disrupted mm. uh in because we got registered in 2016 mm -hmm. 
but we started the process in 2015. Mm -hmm. And now in 2015, mm. um, my brother was diagnosed with kidney failure. Your younger brother? My younger brother. So his kidneys failed from nowhere. You're just on phone. You know, now he's still in the States. And we are, because he wasn't coming home as often as I did, he would make sure every Sunday we had a date. Him, mom, myself. Online. Online. Mm. So we would have a online date. Mm. And so on one of our dates, we noticed that his face is swollen. And so my mom, she's like, what's going on? And he's like, I think it's allergies. She's like, it looks pretty bad. You know, have you gone to the hospital? It's like, I don't think I need to. He's like, no, just go get checked. So he goes and now the following day, you know, my mom asks what happened. And they're like, oh, they said it's allergies. They just give me like a antihistamine, anti allergies. And my mom is like, no, the swelling is getting worse. At this point, he can't open his eyes. Like mm. His face is swollen. And then he's like feeling other symptoms, you know, like I can't see all of a sudden it's pitch black. Uh, I have pins and needles mm. on my hands, even though, the, you know, it's very strange mm. uh, symptoms. So my mom, by day two, day three, she's like, no, this is enough. Like mm. the medication is not working. Mm. Uh, go back mm. and so he's like mom like go back and <laughs> demand a blood test and so at this point i uh, moved mom and he's like you know it's not like kenya i just said i want a blood test you know here the doctor has to prescribe or mm. say you need a blood test i can't just demand that mm -hmm. she's like i don't care what you do don't leave that hospital without a blood test so he's like okay fine i'll try so he goes and he requests for a blood test. He gets a blood test. And so he calls us back and he says, they said the results will be ready in, in two hours. And so, well, okay, we're just talking to him. And then he sees his phone ringing and it had said emergency room. So he's like, ah, my phone is saying emergency room. So my mom is like, pick it, pick it. So he picks it while we're still online. And he's like, hello. And then we can overhear. You know, they're like, Mr. Wako, is that you? And he's like, yes. Can you kindly come back to the hospital? He's like, okay, sure. Then they're like, do you have someone to drive you? He's like, yeah, my neighbor. Okay. And then my mom, she's like, I would just ask the nurse what your blood count is, your HP. And then he's like, what's my blood count? So she says four. She says four. What? And then my, my mom is like, mm -hmm. okay, we'll call you, okay? Like, okay, I'll see you. And then he logs out. My mom just takes a deep breath. She starts praying. <sighs> she starts praying. Mm. So, we don't hear from my brother. Mm.